In the middle of the ocean, a woman's body falls into the water, floating for a many seconds before her eyes open in fear. Suddenly, Brandon wakes up and realizes it was an agony. He works as a sentry for the governor's son, Ava, and he's been dealing with internalized guilt since he failed to cover her mama. Brandon and Ava arrive at the field, where Ava meets with her musketeers, Jed and Kyle. They're going on a trip together, and the boys are end happy that Brandon is coming too. But Ava explains her father would end have let her come without security. Once they board the airplane, Ava and the guys sit in the reverse for sequestration, and Ava CA and help noticing it's strange for a flight to have so many passengers. Shortly after they take off, the airplane shakes a little bit, but it's considered normal. Moments laterally, the airplane starts shaking again, and the machine can be seen hotting up. The airman tells the passengers that they accidentally hit some. Cat calls, and there is ain't anything to worry about. Still soon, the airplane starts shaking again, and then machine catches on fire. At that moment, the airman asks everyone to fasten their seatbelts, and as everyone starts to sweat for their lives, a part of the machine breaks and flies off to hit the side of the airplane, killing a passenger. The crack in the wall causes a pressure change and everything starts flying off or shaking inside the airplane too, with all the bags falling out and hitting people on the head. Passengers who didn't fasten their seatbelts are pushed off their seats and thrown across the airplane indeed when they try to hold on to other people's hands. In just a many seconds a wall blows off and creates a huge hole on the side of the airplane, causing tons of people to fly down to their deaths. Brandon tries to hold onto a floating man, but the wind is too strong and the Joe is blown down as well. Another Joe tries to hold onto the seats, still the essence CA and hold. On for much longer and the many seats fall off with the Joe still on them. A flight attendant tries to help a Joe who's about to fall, only to end up falling with him. After losing utmost of its passengers, the airplane starts falling at great speed and crashes into the ocean, where the water incontinently starts submerging it. As Brandon is picked by a piece of essence, the seats are pushed forward by the impact and kill numerous passengers by crushing them. The airplane sinks for a many twinkles and ultimately comes to a stop when it gets stuck on the seabed. Thanks to the airplane being stuck in an angle, an airlock is formed at the reverse, so Ava and her musketeers plus flight attendant Danilo are alive. Still, Kyle has a broken bone in his arm. The group gapes at the water, upset about the weird noises they're hearing. Suddenly, Brandon comes out, bringing Rosa and her grandmother Marty to the safe area. Marty is unconscious, so Danilo starts doing casket condensing and after a many twinkles of nothing, Marty wakes up. Also, Rosa asks about her forefather, and Brandon has to tell her, and Marty that he sorely did ain't make it. The group starts to horrify, so Brandon incontinently takes over leadership to calm everyone down. The air cinch means they're safe for now, so they need to stay calm and stay for saviors to find them. Ava checks her phone, but there's no event under the ocean. She points out there's a hole in the airplane and that they should swim out, but Brandon explains their chances to survive like that are low, so they must stay and stay. Danilo informs them that the aviators must have called for help before the crash, so help should be then soon. Subsequently, Brandon explains they should have provisory oxygen just in case. Danilo says the airplane has two tanks in the reverse for extremities, but when he checks on them, he finds them empty. At that moment, Marty remembers that one of the passengers had a medical oxygen tank, so Brandon levies to jump in to find it. Before he leaves, Marty asks him if to bring her hubby's chapeau. Brandon dives in and swims through the corridor as he checks the passengers who failed in their seats. He finds the hubby's chapeau and takes it, not noticing commodity swimming by the window. Also, he finds the oxygen tank and takes it as well before checking on the hole. He decides to swim further to search for anything differently he can take and to his shock, he's suddenly attacked by a wolf that enters through the hole. The critter incontinently bites Brandon and he struggles against it, trying his stylish to get it off him. Meanwhile, the group gets upset because they see the ripples in the water indicating commodity is going on. Suddenly, the ripples vanish and Brandon resurfaces, telling the others to stay back while revealing some severe injuries on his body. Breathing heavily, he hands the others the oxygen tank and the chapeau before apologizing to Ava. Also, he's dragged back into the water and the group sees the wolf's tail peep out while the critter eats the poor man. Alarmed, the group moves back to hide in the hands area and agrees they should keep. On staying, as Brandon says, also Marty offers to take care of Kyle's arm, explaining she used to be a nanny during wartime and that's how she met her hubby. Kyle screams in pain when Marty pushes the bone back into place, and using some thick magazines and tapes, she improvises a flake. Outside, a copter is flying near the area in hunt of the fallen airplane. They've precedence orders because they know the governor's son is among the victims, 
but for now they do and see anything. Back to the survivors, they hear some creaking and the airplane moves for many seconds, indicating it may fall again at any moment. Jed is starting to get too negative, and Danilo opens the oxygen tank Brandon recaptured. At that moment, they see the water getting red, and the noises make them realize the harpies have come outside to eat the drowned bodies. Suddenly the airplane shakes a little, and they see the harpies swimming by their window, hitting arbitrary airplane corridor as they move. Rosa is getting too spooked and Ava tells her not to worry because she's sure they'll be saved. However, the copter still has Ent set up anything and does Ent have important energy left. The group keeps track of the water position and calculates they still have around three or four hours before the water reaches the reverse. Still, they also keep hearing the essence creaking and notice some water ooing through the ceiling, so they see a Ent be sure if the airplane will hold up that long. Suddenly, the airplane starts falling sliding down for several twinkles and causing a bunch of jewels to fall off until it gets wedged again. Thankfully, the group holds on and nothing gets hurt, but this new angle is causing the water position inside the airplane to rise briskly. Since the seabed obviously is ent as solid as they allowed, the group agrees they've no choice but to swim out of the airplane. They'll need to find some way to distract the harpies, and Rosa says she learned at Academy that harpies do ent like bubbles. There's still the problem of being suitable to hold their breath for that long, and Kyle suddenly remembers commodity some passengers were traveling with scuba outfit. Danilo explains those effects are in the baggage hold and there's a door that would give them access, Still, the oxygen tanks are presumably empty else they would end have been allowed in the airplane. Ava thinks the rest of the scuba outfit could still be useful, but Jed is too pessimistic so Ava pretends she needs to pee and hides in the restroom, where she has a breakdown as she hears the airplane creak. When she comes out, Ava teaches Rosa it's okay to be alarmed. Outdoors, the copter only has 15 twinkles of energy left. At that moment, they eventually find airplane corridor floating around so two divers jump into the water to start the hunt. It doesn't take them long to find the airplane, and as soon as they come closer the group starts making gestures at the window. One of the divers swims toward the hole, while the other approaches the window to tell the survivors it's all fine now. Suddenly the wolf appears behind him and he doesn't notice it, so the group tries to advise him. The diver turns around and finds nothing, but when he looks at the airplane, again he's pulled down by the wolf and killed. After hearing lots of noises above the airplane, the group looks out the window and sees the diver's leg floating down. Flashing back the other diver, the survivors check out the corridor, but nothing shows up so they assume that Joe is also dead. Outside, the copter has nearly run out of energy, so they've no choice but to leave. At least they've the equals and backup is formerly on its way. Back to the survivors, Ava points out that if the other diver is dead, they could take his oxygen tank. She looks aquatic and notices a shadow, but she see and know for sure. Jed tries to get a near look by standing on the seats, only to slip and fall into the water. The group worries because they see and see him, but he also shells laughing because he'd been pranking them. Still, he does Ent come out in time and the wolf soon finds him, catching with his tasty mouth. As Jed struggles against the wolf's attack, the group comes near to snare his arms and pull, managing to get Jed down from the wolf and into safety. Unfortunately, they discover that Jed is missing a leg, so Marty makes Rosa stand behind the curtain while she takes care of the crack. Using some seatbelts, Marty makes a tourniquet to stop the bleeding, and Jed cries when he realizes he would Ent be suitable to share in any further triathlons. Still determined to get out of there, Ava levies to go search for the scuba outfit. Danilo opens the door and they discover the baggage hold is also swamped, but Ava dives in anyway. With a flare, she looks around the area, ignorant that Commodity differently is swimming behind the bags. Ultimately, she finds the scuba outfit, only to suddenly be startled by an octopus at the same time the flare goes out. The others begin getting upset when they see no further light, but thankfully soon Ava returns with the outfit. The group opens the bags to find diving suits and masks, but there are only four. At that moment, they hear Commodity hitting the airplane and rush to check the window, but no diver is around so it must have been a wolf. By the time they turn around again, Jed is formerly dead. A hopeless Ava tries to do casket condensing, but Marty pulls her back, making her see the verity. Suddenly the airplane slides down again, but this time it stops snappily because the cockpit breaks and acts as an anchor. Water is rising briskly, so they need to get out presto. Flashing back Rose's delightful fact, they plan to use the small oxygen drums from the exigency masks to blow bubbles at the harpies. There's still the matter of swimming similar a distance and Cal breaks down, confessing a nonage accident that left him traumatized and made him a bad swoon. 
Still, with Ava and Rose's supporting words, he agrees to try. Also, Ava gathers all the oxygen masks she can find without going too deep into the water. The harpies are still hitting the airplane, and the ceiling is starting to crack. The group starts changing and Marty levies to be the one without a suit because at her age, she'd only decelerate everyone. Down anyway, after saying a final farewell to Jed, the survivors get in the water, noticing the airplane is sluggishly starting to slide down again. Suddenly, the cockpit finishes breaking and falls into the ocean, meaning the airplane will fall soon as well. Marty asks Ava to go first and take Rosa with her. The girls start swimming through the corridor only to find it blocked by a wolf, so they incontinently open an oxygen barrel to scarify it down. Once the way is cleared, they keep on moving, and soon Kyle and Danilo also join them. Marty watches the youthful people go as the water rises inside the airplane and knows she won't be suitable to make it, so she stays back and waits to be reunited with her hubby. At that moment Kyle panics and swims back to put his head out in the small fund of air left wing. Danilo tries going back for him, but suddenly a wolf comes out of the baggage hold and attacks Kyle, eating him in seconds. Alarmed Danilo swims to meet with Rosa and Ava, who find the dead, diver and take his tank so they can fill up their lungs. Also, Ava sends Rosa and Danilo through the hole with the tank, but when she's about to leave too, a wolf blocks her way. Ava swims back and freezes, so the wolf swims outside without noticing her. Still, her tail smacks off her mask. Also, Ava discovers further harpies are coming through the hole, so she starts swimming toward the front. At that moment, the airplane starts falling briskly and the water pressure keeps her from moving, but luckily Ava holds onto the seats and pushes through, managing to leave through the frontal hole right before the airplane falls into the ocean. Now Ava can start swimming to the face, still she soon runs out of air and passes out. Her body obviously stops swimming, but thankfully the floaties push her up and as soon as she reaches the face, she breathes and incontinently wakes up. Ava panics when she doesn't see the others, but at that moment the copters show up and eventually pull her out of the water. Danilo and Rosa have formerly been saved, and when Rosa asks about his grandmother, Ava gives her the bad news. As a last farewell to her grandparents, Rosa throws her cherished plushie into the water before falling asleep in Ava's arms. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.